Welcome back to my channel. I am going to be going through my gym equipment. Somebody had asked me for this and a couple other people had messaged me asking me, you know, what belt do I use? What shoes do I use? All of that good stuff. So I figured I would just do a quick video on it. I just got a new gym bag. I had a Core Nutritionals duffel bag, but I've had it for three and a half years and the strap on it broke and also the zippers broke. So I decided to buy one of these Wolfpack fitness bags they are kind of pricey but this color was the cheapest one so i decided to go for it it looks like it would last a long time and i also ordered a brazil patch because i am brazilian and i am going to order a custom patch from etsy that says no grit no pearl because if you watched my prep series then you know that that is my little motto and saying so yeah i figured it would be kind of fun to personalize and on here i do have my first piece of equipment to show you guys is some liquid chalk i use this when i am powerlifting. um josh has regular powdered chalk but for me i think liquid chalk is just less messy and easier to manage i just get this on amazon i can link it in the description box below and that's that um, on the front pocket I have my headphones. Sometimes I use my AirPods, sometimes I use Beats. I never thought that I would be a person who used Beats in the gym, but I got these as a gift from my mom a few years ago and I started training with them and I actually love it. It really does kind of zone out the whole gym and puts me very focused more than AirPods do and I think that's just because they're big on my ears and it just kind of gives me like this tunnel vision and I don't hear anything else around me. Sometimes Josh will be complaining about the music that's playing in the gym and I'm like, I don't even know what's playing in the gym because these bad boys right here, I can't hear anything. And I also keep my Beats case right hanging on the side. That's another place I can just store them. And in here I have some Beat Kicks. So if you are going to train in Beats, I do recommend getting some Beat Kicks. They're these little like, I call them underwear for headphones. They're just protective so that the sweat, when you are sweating, doesn't ruin the inside leather lining of the Beats. I have a couple colors. I do have a coupon code. I don't want this to be a video where I'm just pushing coupon codes on you guys. So I promise it's not. Um, but if you guys wanted to try other fun designs, I have some donut ones, some cookies and milk, and some junk food. These are, you just pop them in the wash. They are the same material as like leggings, so they're great for sweat wicking. Um, but let's move on to the actual gym equipment. So as far as straps go, I have a couple different options. So Versa grips are great if you feel like you can go heavier on a movement, but your grip is holding you back. So for me, this happens a lot with back exercises. So if I am doing a lat pull down, I feel like my lats are a lot stronger than my actual hands. So by using these Versa grips, I can actually lift more weight. And the same thing goes for any type of row movement. I definitely love using these. I also sometimes use them for heavy dumbbell RDLs because my hamstrings and glutes are much stronger than my grip is and I'd rather have myself focus on the movement being like focused towards my glutes and my hamstrings versus worrying if my hands are going to slip on the dumbbells. So the way that these are used, you slip them on your wrist like this and you tighten them around here and then if this is the barbell, this gets wrapped around the barbell and that is how you hold it just like that and the barbell will go right in there and it helps your grip so definitely recommend these you could probably find some like knockoff kinds but I think I just got these on Amazon as well or you can go to the VersaGrip website I'll link everything in the description box below however for a powerlifting meet you cannot use VersaGrips or what's called the straps I'll show you guys straps in a second you can only use wrist wraps so the way that wrist straps work, you would think that they're protecting your wrist, right? Wrong. So I have to take off my Apple Watch to use wrist straps, but I will just show you guys. This little loop right here, and mine is from um, Inzer. 
that is a powerlifting brand. The loop right here is just to help you secure it around your wrist without it slipping. So you put it around your thumb and then you're going to wrap it around your wrist really tightly. And then you can keep it on your thumb or I like to just take it off my thumb and just have it on my wrist. And what this does is it's going to force your hand to make this movement. So right now it's really hard for me to extend my fingers and I'm not just like acting like my hand is droopy and it's clenching my fist. And the reason behind that is because if you, if I just put my hand like this and I squeeze this, it shuts down on your fingers. Try it yourself right now while you're watching me. Go like this, let your fingers be jello, squeeze, and your hand is gonna clamp down on itself. So this forces your grip to be stronger, and this is the only thing that's allowed for a powerlifting meet, so I do use these during a meet for deadlifts, and if I'm getting really heavy on deadlifts during a workout, and I wanna practice my grip strength, I use these over VersaGrips, because VersaGrips aren't necessarily going to help your grip strength, which is what's needed for a deadlift in a powerlifting competition. So. These come in a two pack, they are by Inzer, and these are regulated by Powerlifting Federation, so they are legal for meat use. Next, another option for straps is just what's called a strap. These are just, sorry, there's Hank hair all over. These were my first ever lifting type of hand grip strap that I ever bought before I ever had Versa grips or wrist straps. Um, and these are really cheap. They just go around your um, wrist. There's hair all over it, so I'm sorry. You tighten it on your wrist like this, and it's hard to show without a barbell, but it gets wrapped around the barbell like this, and then you grab it like that. And it also helps when your grip is giving out. So this is kind of like a more complicated way of using a Versa grip. This would be easier on a barbell over something like a dumbbell or a lat pull down or a row. Whereas a Versa grip would be much quicker than trying to wrap this around that equipment. So those are just some options. I just keep, I honestly never use these anymore now that I have Versa grips. I just don't see the point, but I just keep them in the bag just in case it's good to have. And then as far as other equipment, I have this band here. I'm actually going to have to ask Josh where he got it because he's the one who got it, but this is the brand. It's WOD Nation, Workout of the Day Nation. Um, it's also called Voodoo Floss, but I use this for warming up my lats, stretching out my shoulders, warming up my rotator cuff, my pecs, before bench, before back day. It's really good to do um, range of motion exercises with. Um, and I will link this below once I ask Josh where he got them. But this is just a good warm-up tool. It's not necessarily something that you absolutely need in your gym bag, but for me, I use it every time I warm up. If you are a power lifter, you will definitely need some knee sleeves. Mine are inside out, so let me just put them the right way real quick. I initially had really cheap knee sleeves from like Amazon um, when I first started powerlifting, but then when I decided I was gonna compete in powerlifting, I decided I needed to get some heavy duty knee sleeves because not only will it help me in my lift, but it's also going to be allowed at the meet. And I wanted to practice in the knee sleeves that I would be using for a meet um, while I'm actually getting ready for the meet so that my legs were used to it. But basically this is like an exoskeleton, so it gives your knees and your legs an extra um, compression and also an extra bounce. So the material of this is very um, thick and stretchy, but also very compressive. So it gives your knees more momentum, I would say. Um, and it also protects your knees if you have, you know, knee joint issues. So I only wear these when the weight gets very heavy. It definitely helps. Um, and it does make a difference when you are trying to get stronger in the gym and hit PRs. These are SBD brand, squat bench deadlift. 
I'll link them down below. I think you can only get them on the SBD website and they are expensive, but they will last you a lifetime. They are super durable. I've had these for three years now and they look brand new. So yeah, those are my knee sleeves. I also keep a hip circle in my gym bag and that is also to warm up. You can use these around your knees to warm up with. Um, you can put them around your feet to warm up with to do squats, hip thrusts, glute bridges, glute kickbacks. Just helps activate those glutes and really warm up your hips. So I keep that in my gym bag. And then I also keep my belt. One sec. This is my weightlifting belt. It is heavy duty. It is an Inzer lever belt. It is, I would say, the goat of the weightlifting belt. It is pricey. I believe it was $99, but it is worth it because it will last you forever. Um, it's very, very stiff. This has been broken in and I've had it for four years now, but it closes like this. Super thick, 10 millimeter belt. Um, it is legal to use at a powerlifting competition and um, when you first get it, it's super stiff, but I'll show you guys right now. And then you just snap it in super tight. It goes right beneath my rib cage and right above my hip bone. And I use it for squat, deadlift, and occasionally bench. And it's a very quick, easy release, which is nice because it is supposed to be very tight, but it's a quick release and it won't come undone when you're actually doing a movement, only when you release this lever right here. So I highly recommend Inzer Belt. It's much safer to lift heavy in an Inzer lever belt than it is to do one of those um, Velcro belts. Those are not gonna protect your back at all, and it's not going to protect your core either. So this belt is used to really enforce your core and when you take that big deep breath in and out, your core will push against the belt like a brick wall to create pressure from your back and your abs to push up against your spine and protect your back while you squat or while you deadlift. So yeah, I highly recommend an Inzer. I think you might be able to get Inzer on Amazon, but don't quote me. I would probably just go to their website. Um, and the cool thing about these belts is that they are size adjustable. So there's these little notches right here. And actually when I'm on prep and I'm getting much leaner, I do move it in one to make it a little bit tighter. So that's really cool because it will fluctuate with whatever weight you are. And these are just really good for heavy lifting. If you are, you know, mostly doing bodybuilding style lifting and you're not doing heavy compound movements, I wouldn't say you need a lifting belt. I would just say, you know, get a stronger core. Don't depend on the belt. But if you are trying to hit PRs, you are lifting really heavy, doing a lot of compound movements, definitely invest in a belt. The last thing that I have in my gym bag is my squat shoes. I really wanted Nike Romelios. I'll put a picture of them on the screen. But the year that I bought squat shoes, they, those were just like out of stock everywhere. They only had men's sizes and they didn't have my size. So I decided to go with these Addy Powers. That's what they're called. They're Adidas powerlifting shoe. These help because they have a little bit of a wedge where your heel sits in your squat. So for me, I have very poor ankle mobility because I had ankle surgery on my right ankle when I was 12 and I still have a bone spur in that ankle. So for me, I really needed this little extra lift to help me hit depth in a squat um, and to help me with my hips as well. So everything is attached in the leg. If you're having bad ankle mobility, you'll notice that your hips are tighter. So for me, these helped a lot, just that little extra wedge and they're very sturdy. They're nice flat based, they're um, tight and they just do the trick. These also are not necessary at all for um, if you're doing bodybuilding. I would just get them if you are a powerlifter or an Olympic weightlifter or a crossfitter. But otherwise, they're not really necessary. And for me, I deadlift in Converse because they are flat. I am closer to the ground and you don't want any type of elevation when you're doing a deadlift because then you are lifting the weight much um, more off the ground than you need to. 
But yeah, that is it for my gym bag and my equipment. I know this was a super random and quick video, but I hope that it helped you guys kind of pick out what you want to buy. And other than that, this is my Hydro Jug. And I try and drink one and a half of these a day a minimum. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about equipment, if you need advice about equipment, drop that in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.